Now we saw something with a string alone. Let's bring our next element and put these two together. So let's say I have a block resting on a frictionless plane, and there's a string attached to it. But now it passes over a pulley, goes down, and has another block attached to it. Now we know we can ask many questions. Let that mass be m1, this be m2. Before we ask anything else, let's ask the question: What must the minimum mass of m2 be for the system to move? Now one of the common answers I get for this question is that this mass. Must be at least as much as the other mass for this whole system to move, because we imagine that some particular force is required to get that object on the plane moving. This is because in most real life situations, planes have friction, so it's difficult for us to imagine a surface that is purely frictionless. Now, imagine it'll it'll help if you imagine that thing to be made up of ice, so smooth that just a nudge will move it completely, like a bowling bowling alley. If you imagine it that way, you'll understand that even a smallest mass tied to this can pull a really, really large mass over there. In other words, if I have a mosquito tied to this string over here, the other end of which is tied to an elephant, as we let go, the mosquito will fall, and the elephant will will be dragged on the frictionless surface, no matter how counterintuitive that seems. So now we have established that no matter what the ratio of masses are, the system will move. So let the acceleration of m1 be a1, the acceleration of m2 be a2. The string will have some tension. There will be t. Now watch what happens as you find out what the value of t is. This seems not too different from my initial problem, right? If I had two blocks that are moving, connected by a string, such that the string is taut, there the string was massless and inextensible, right? So the tension throughout the string was a constant. Now to this massless, inextensible string, what I am adding is a pulley such that this block is down. Then how different can this problem be? So reading wise, it looks a little hard, right? Because a massless, inextensible string is passing over a massless, frictionless pulley to be connected between two blocks. But now I know what all these meanings are. Then what really happens is the bottom block is going to have gravity acting on it now, and there's nothing to cancel it out. No normal reaction, except for what is there to cancel it out in this case? Not the normal reaction, but the tension. And because it's a massless string, as you climb up the rope, the tension is going to remain constant. And because it's a frictionless pulley, as you cross over to the other side, it's going to be the same tension. And as it continues. Finally, you have the same tension pulling block M1 as well. So I've marked out my forces. Let me take body M2 first, and I'll write out the equation for it. It has an acceleration A2 pointing downwards. So now, which must mean that by this diagram, M2g, the force downwards, must be larger than T upwards. So the equation will be M2g minus T equals M2 into A, Newton's second law equation. Yeah, this is what we'll write for every single body, right? The same equation I have to write for M1 now. For m1, along the horizontal, there is an acceleration. Along the vertical, it will have an m1g and a normal reaction, which are both going to cancel. So we don't care about the vertical right now. It's very obvious that it's zero in that. So along the horizontal, if you write, there's only one force along the horizontal, which is t. So that's the net force that must be equal to m1 into a1, right? So t equals m1 into a1. What I want is in that equation t. How many equations are there? Two. How many variables are there? M1, M2, A1, A2, T, G. Six variables, sir. Yeah. I know it sounds like a silly piece of advice, but it is important to differentiate between the constants given in the question and the variables that we have defined. So let's see us do it. What are the constants given in the question? M1, M2. Yeah, G. Yeah, these are given in the question. What are not given are what we assumed because we did not know the values. They are a1 for the mass m1 is the acceleration, a2 for m2, and the tension in the string. So then the real answer to the question: How many variables are there? Three. How many equations again? Two. Still a problem, right? But no matter who you are, no matter how many days you solve, even if you think and learn like Bayu sir, you cannot solve for three variables, two equations. Okay, that nobody can do. So that leaves us with two options: one is to give up on this and go home. Other one is try and look here for one more equation because we need three equations to solve for three variables. Let's see. When the two blocks went like this, right, together, we knew that their displacements, their velocities, and their accelerations were equal at every single point in time. Now, what I've done is taken that and kept it below over here, right, so that one is moving, one block is moving like that, and the other is moving down. But now, if the block that's moving down, let's say it moved a distance x. Right, so x length of string was added 
to this side correct which is not there before but where could it have come from this x extra length it has to have come from the other side because the string's length is not changing it's a taut string so if some string got added to this side that much has to be reduced from the other side so if x length got added to this side x length got subtracted from that side which means if this block moved a distance x or had a displacement x in this direction that block m1 had a displacement x along that direction both these took the same times which means like our previous argument you can argue that the displacements the velocities and the accelerations will be equal at every single point in time the magnitudes of them because in that case they were happening in the same direction as well but here the directions are different so the magnitude of the displacements the magnitude of the velocities and the magnitude of their accelerations are going to be common or constant this means i finally have my third equation and because a1 and a2 are just the magnitudes i can directly write that as a1 equals a2 now i finally have three equations and three variables if i replace both a1 and a2 because they're equal with a common variable a then the equations look like this which means i have two equations with two variables of which i want my t or tension and i can also find out my a 